Hey, how you guys doing? We're going to continue on with uh, floors, roofs, porches, and that level. And we did talk about, you know, joist hangers. Now we're going to talk about columns. And so columns basically, or posts, pretty much are put under beams and under um, uh, joists and structures to keep it up, keep your house up, keep the floors level. Sometimes when the floors aren't level, you know, it could be a lot of things. So you want to go down and look at your columns, okay? And so we're going to do a little, little PowerPoint here. I've got some photos and I've got some other resources. And so let's get right into the uh, show here. So basically, um, we're going to be talking about columns, okay? And so... You know, you've got columns on the outside, like here you could see, you know, you got three columns and it's, you want to make sure that the structure here isn't cracked. See how it's, it was cracked and they fixed it, it was settled. You want to make sure that the supports are good. Always look at them because that's going to hold up a lot of snow loads and uh, a lot of dead loads, okay? Um, sometimes columns hold up parts of homes too, like in the older homes you can see how this wood column, it's a solid wood column, is holding up this whole structure. Okay, it is cantilevered a bit, and if this column starts to settle or rot from insects, then you're going to have problems like that. You know, a lot of times also, um, you've seen homes with, these are posts, okay, and sometimes there's piers. Piers are just columns under the porch, so we got piers, posts, columns, okay, so when these become eccentric, in other words, they're not level, then this happens. So whenever you see a column, you know, that's out of plumb, okay? When they're out of plumb, they lose most of their strength. And you get this um, eccentric loading, and so then it starts to settle and crack and kaboom, like you can see right here. All right, so you, you, you don't want to get to this point. Um, also, columns like this is a column that you saw earlier. You know, you got to have bearing. You can see how this is cracked out. And why did it crack? Because it didn't have, it wasn't embedded enough and it's like being loaded and it kicked out the concrete so you know they could slip out you want your column base to be properly anchored okay here you can see how this anchor isn't that good it's actually just a piece of mortar joint here's one that moved what moved out okay <laughs> and we can see what's going to happen to this to this uh, structure above now more common column issues are rust and how does it get rusty well let's talk about this for a minute um, usually they don't rust in the center like that. They'll rust at the bottom, and I'll show you some examples here in a second. And the reason they rust is because you've got high indoor humidity, or it's an older, usually an older foundation. In the old days, when they poured concrete floors, they didn't put plastic vapor barriers down, and maybe they didn't put a drainage plane or stone underneath for drainage. So there's a lot of moisture, you know, underneath the homes. And then as the house gets older and the drain tile gets plugged up, you get hydrostatic pressure. And before you know it, this column is sitting in moisture, you know, and the column's hollow, right? So it's got air, maybe air, you know, and, and it rusts through, and then the column starts to compress, and sometimes it compresses under the slab. You don't even see it, and all of a sudden your house doors are getting tight, or the floor is not level, you know, and or there's cracks developing. So here you can see the rust coming through, okay? And you can always go to a column and hit it, hit it with a, a back of a hammer or a back of a screwdriver should ping you. If it doesn't ping, it's like thut, thut, like a, like a, a dead sound. <laughs> well, the thing's probably rusting through, you know? So you want to hear a nice sound. Now, here's here's a hole. I just po poked a hole right through it. And, and you know what's happening here is this comes rusting through. It's weak, you know, uh, and, and it's going to start to cause issues uh, in the upper structure. Now, here's one uh, that we saw under. It was kind of going into a wall. And we had to get on, on, on our knees to see it. But this one just failed. And a lot of times the columns will just fail onto, onto itself and just keep compressing and compressing. And upstairs, you know, things, the, the doors are opening on their own. You think it's a ghost or something, you know, or maybe maybe the doors don't close anymore. Now you've got to shim them, and, or not shim them, but you've got to shave them down and, you know, make them fit. So always go down. Screwdrivers work really good. And I just tap on them. You tap on those things. If they, the metal ones are easy. Now, sometimes the older homes will have very long spans. So this house had a basement and a crawl. And what you can see going on here is that 
the floors upstairs were really deflected because when they built the house 80 years ago, maybe they should have had a beam in there. They didn't put one in, so someone did put a beam in here. What you don't see in this picture is the bottoms of the columns. These are columns that you could buy at your, you know, they're not that expensive. And uh, you could buy them at, you know, at your Lowell's or Home Depot's. Now, later on, I'll show you how you need to connect these. Now, sometimes people weld the tops to them or they bolt them, they screw them. You know, I'm not sure they're going to go anywhere, um, but they should be they should be fastened on the top. But the more importantly, they should be on a good, stable uh, a footer. Now, this one here, you can see, you know, this is a little eccentric here. They didn't put the column directly underneath the center, you know, and then the bearing plate isn't even connected. It's just a piece of metal, and they just kind of threw that up there, so it's not 100% bearing, so you're not distributing the load. And you can see how the load, the house is cracking the piece of wood they used as a shim. You know, I mean, it's probably not going to go anywhere, but it's still, you, you want to try to make everything level, okay? All right? Now, another thing you don't want to do is, like, here, you can see how now you're, now you're supporting your beam on the top of a column that doesn't have a plate. And the reason you want a plate is because you want a little more bearing pressure, a little more surface area that you contact your beam with. This can be a problem, okay? Now, one other thing, people will put columns in, you know, when homes deflect, they're not level, and they add columns in between other columns because they're rusted, and they'll put these columns next to the rusted ones. That's fine. Everything helps, okay? But, you know, this one here, you know there's no footer. Now, I've, I've inspected 18,000 homes, and I've rarely seen, you know, a bad column insulation crack through a floor, but it, it can happen. So you don't want to do it this way unless you know there's at least four inches of concrete. Same with this one. Here, they just put it on a piece of wood. At least they distributed a load. But the problem with the wood is this is an old house. So the concrete floor doesn't have a vapor barrier because they probably didn't invent plastic when they built it. And if you've got hydrostatic pressure, because let's say the trees are growing and the, and the drain storm lines are plugged up with roots, you're going to have moisture getting pushed up through this concrete, and that's going to rot out this piece of wood. Now, you'll probably see it happening. The other problem is that night you're going to stub your toe. So I would say not a great idea. It probably works, you know, but it's not the right way of doing it. This is a little bit better. You want to take a saw, and you got to cut the floor, and you want to get down a bit, maybe a foot, okay? And then you pour a footer. Now, you could put a footer. Now, this one here, they put a footer down, and then they had an inch or two, and they put a little topping on it so that what you're looking at on the top isn't real structural. It's on the bottom that's sitting on the footer. And this, this way it'll never move, you know. Uh, here's an excessive footer. <laughs> this ain't going anywhere. You could probably land a helicopter on this column. But, you know, this is kind of what you want to do. Um, a lot of people don't. They'll just put the column next to the old column, which is fine. I mean, it's going to help out, but it's not the right way of doing it. Another thing is, you know, you want to fasten your columns to the bottoms of the beams. You know, so here you could probably add a couple lag bolts. Now, this, this column is holding up a beam in the center of the house, and you can see the column just, just deteriorated. And you can see the moisture that's coming through the floor. Do you see those, this little moisture stain right here? See it here? That's, that's hydrostatic loading. So here's a perfect example how moisture comes up underground from hydrostatic pressure as the houses get older, and they just rust this out, right? And then this whole column starts to compress, and then upstairs in the kitchen, you can't figure out why your stove isn't level, okay? So check these out and here what you want to do is you probably want to put a support a couple supports right here to hold it up take this one out cut this floor out make sure there's a footer down there if there isn't pour yourself a footer you know i would say one foot by one foot below the slab and then of course your slabs you got to dig down a bit and then put the new column back up all right um you can get dig these are different columns you could buy these are kind of expensive here these are hollow structural columns and you can see these are wood some are metal Okay, and um, you could buy these. You can also go to those, those uh, a lot of people that tear down houses. They got those st stores in the cities that sell old stuff, you know, so you can probably get an old column if you want. If you want to match like a front pillar, you can look for one. And they've got them in all the cities. They're all online. This is all wood. This is three-quarter inch uh, wood, and, and it's pretty heavy. And you can see this is pretty strong. It's like almost a rounded floorboards. Now, <clears throat> when you go into crawl spaces to resupport, I mean, this is going to work, right? Sure, it's going to work. There's no load here, but the load is here. It's on dirt. 
Okay, but they put plastic down at least so this won't rot out. But you know what's going to happen, don't you? It's going to settle. And and not only that, there's a there's a this is not even uh, this is sloped here. Okay, and so that's not going to work too good. It'll be good for a while, but it will settle. You know, <clears throat> this top part is okay, but you know, you probably want to maybe fasten it with a steel plate, okay? And then this really wasn't even necessary. They added this later because the floor span joists were very long and the floors were deflecting. And this is kind of a hodgepodge. Uh, and like if you bought this house and you saw this, I wouldn't remove them. <laughs> you know, I'd leave them there because once you remove them, everything's going to go crazy upstairs, right? So you got to, when you see something like this, you want to make it right. You got to leave it alone and work around this. Because uh, you don't want to disrupt the doors, because they've already cut the doors, right? Now you have to. Now you're going to fix the house, jack it up. Now the doors don't work anymore. And now you have to replace all the doors because they were shimmed or cut or whatever. So this is not good. Not going to work. You want a footer. Not a good idea. This will work temporarily. Not going to last forever. Um, this is real sloppy. Like they try to nail it with a little, I don't know how small, a little tack nail up here. I mean, you, you want to use proper size bolts. And when you're doing steel. Uh, you, they have straps on some of these, okay, or you can weld them. Now, sometimes you know how deep things are. They do sell this tool. This is a four-foot tool, and you just push it in the ground. So if you're trying to find out if there's a footer, you drill a hole in the concrete in the basement and push this thing down, and you can feel it. Ah, there's a footer there. Okay, we're good to go. Because sometimes you don't know if there's a footer because of the concrete. Maybe you don't want to tear up the concrete to look. So drill out about three, four feet, and here's, I got to think I have a picture. Okay, here's a guy coming down at an angle. He's coming down at an angle, okay, to see if there's a, there's a, a pier on the inside of this crawl here. And he's trying to see if he could feel it. And you can probably get the, these tools um, on the internet. I'm going to guess they're probably like 40, 50 bucks. Now, steel columns. Yeah, of course, these are the best. Now, this one here is actually used for a different purpose. These walls, and we're going to do a video, and we have videos on this where you got horizontal cracks and wall bows, okay? And, and so this is the best way to fix it. And I'm not going to get into it in this video, but I do have other videos that we're going to get into this pretty heavily. So these steel columns are good. You can use them to hold at the center of the home, okay? Um, here's another one. Like here, you can see the column looked good. I tapped at it. It sounded like really like a thug it wasn't dinging and ringing. And I took my screwdriver and bam, I went right through. And you know what? This, this house is going to settle. So you want to fix that, all right? Um, now, these beams here, now this is a termite deal, or a, a maybe powder post beetle. And what they're trying to do is fix it with a new piece of wood, all right? And they put this little lag bolt in here. I mean, <laughs> you know, I would have probably just put more masonry block instead. Sometimes, you know, having a better surface area is better than that little piece of steel it's probably going to be okay but not the way they did it here because here they kind of pushed it into the they fill this in with mortar so what happens when this mortar pushes down or cracks then you're going to get some settlement some movement upstairs now this is not rocket science i mean you know here i don't know what they're thinking but they put this in between they, i don't know where you even got this jack and what they did is they uh resupported it on three pieces of wood <laughs> I don't know if I like this prep. This doesn't even look good. It might work for a while. I don't know, maybe 20 years, 30 years. Who knows how long, but it's not the right way of fixing it. Um, not, you know, here's something here where, you know, you, you lost some of the bearing plate. You know, it's probably not going anywhere. You still got a lot here, but it's starting to compress. And this is pushing up through, and that's why this broke. So when that's happening, it's pushing up through. That's an issue. You might want to check the beam. They probably got termites, and this one had uh the wood was deteriorating, it was getting weaker, so it's kind of punching through. This is the column support that you do on, you fix the walls on the end walls, and you know, then you do some lateral supporting here, but we're gonna, we'll get into that in another video, and that's the same kind of thing. Now here, I don't know what they're thinking here, but here they, uh, they're putting a beam on the end, okay, where, you know, and they were using the column, and this thing's twisting, and not even sure, you know, if you don't know how houses work and how foundations work and you know how the basics of structures then you want to just get a friend maybe a carpenter or an engineer and say hey wait <laughs> just what are you doing here this is this is wrong there's a million things how to, i don't know what the problem here is but i think the, the house was settling and there could be something going on in the back here you know with the deteriorated sill plate maybe they had brick that didn't have weep holes and it was rotting out so this is a really odd installation and, of course, they put it right there on the ground. You know, we don't know if there's a footer there, okay? 
Um, this one here, this beam, this is a reinforced concrete foundation, so we know we know that these things have at least a one to two foot foundation. You know, when they built this, you just put knowing knowing the form works. This is probably what, 20 years old, maybe 30. And we know the footer is at least going to be one to two feet. So a lot of times you can get lucky and place this right next to the foundation and catch that footer that's already being used for the foundation. You know, and you could drill with a hammer drill into the ground, like, you know, not right there, of course, off to the side. And if, you, if the drill keeps going down, 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 down in concrete, you know you've got the footer. A lot of these columns come with these straps, you know, and uh, you can use those and utilize those, okay? Um, this one here was temporary. Now, sometimes they'll use this to when they're trying to fix a wall, so they'll lift the house up and then try to straighten a wall out, okay? And so we're, we're going to look at, and, you know, columns last a long time. Here's a building that, you know, the building... The building fell down, but the columns are standing. Concrete, you know. This is uh, in a basement in a 90-year-old building. You can see the whole building above is rotted, but these columns last forever. Concrete will actually get stronger and stronger and stronger over time. You know, the, this is now this is a subway system that was abandoned in, like, I don't know, 60 years in Rochester. And cars are driving up, like, maybe 10 feet or 20 feet above this. And these columns are still beautiful. Um... These, this is again, this is up in Rochester, an abandoned uh, subway system. And they don't even use it, but it's still holding up the roads, you know. It's holding up all the freeways, and they've been down here for a long time. They probably, these were built, I think, in the 50s, you know. And here's another subway system, you know, that's been abandoned. You can see those columns full of graffiti now. They're sitting there. Concrete and steel last a long time. Even in the churches, you know, our churches are closing up. The glass is falling out, and guess what? The columns are still standing there. Okay, so let's take a quick look at uh, um, let's take a quick look at uh, um, this book I have here. And so, in a nutshell, you want to make sure that when you have a column, that you got the proper footing below it. Okay, number two. You want to make sure that your bearing is correct, that that, that is fastened to the top, that you've got a good bearing plate. Number three, of course, you want to make sure it's level. You know, if it's not level, it's going to be eccentric loaded, and you're going to have other problems. Here's a, a picture of, of the footing. Remember I talked about the 4-inch concrete floor? And remember we talked about drilling a hole and using that piece of that rod, and you could, you could drill a hole here and push that rod down to feel this to see if there's a footer there. If there isn't one there, and it keeps going down, then you're going to have to cut this concrete out and pour this footer because you want to have a footer put underneath there. Um, there's different types of columns. You know, we talked about we talked about the, the wood columns. We talked about the steel columns. We talked about the concrete columns. Um, so, you know, you want to A, you want to make sure that the column is not out of plumb, okay? Put a level on it. You want to make sure that it's not rusted on the bottom, the top, or the center. If it's a wood column, you want to check to see if the insects that attack columns are termites and powder post beetles. But you have it usually in homes that are like 20% humidity, okay? Um, also, you want to make sure that uh, um, the footing isn't too small, it's too large, and that the... Uh, the house isn't settling. So we're going to end this right here. And uh, I want you guys to watch my other videos. Please rate and subscribe. Thank you.